JP Productions and CP Productions presents Baby, Baby Mama, Mama Drama. Drama. Now the purpose of this project is to bring the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And just because the relationship between you and your child's mother ends does not mean that you step back and remove yourself from this child's life. Because when you think about it, mm -hmm. who's the one that's left with all of the pain? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. With no further ado, Enjoy! It's supposed to be Dr. J. I mean, oh, yeah. if you know J. Yeah, <laughs> you I think it's real, for real? I don't think yeah. it's real. They ain't about that life. Seriously? You know, you think, you think? They just told me to come in here. Right? They told yeah. you. Yeah. you didn't know. Oh, yeah. I hope it don't take that long. I don't care no. who it is. I just want to get a body early. Yeah, you guys got great attitudes. Well, what you going to do? Oh. Hello, and welcome to our first annual BMD class, otherwise known as Baby Mama Drama. <laughs> After this eight-week session, I really hope that you are able to use the tools and the wisdom that you learn here and apply it to your life. Now, yes, I am Dr. J, <laughs> also known as Dr. Jam, and you can call me either one. Mm -hmm. I have some informational packets here for you that have your name on them. In this packet, you're going to see statistics and some websites that will help you to continue to be an outstanding father, okay? As I call your name, just raise your hand and I'll go ahead and hand you your folder, all right? Chester, all right, Chester. Thank you for coming, Chester, welcome. Doug, Doug, oh, okay. Hi, Doug, welcome to our class. Mm -hmm. All right, Stefan. Stephen? Stephen, actually. Oh, Stephen? Oh, yeah. Stephen. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Nice to meet you, uh -huh. uh, Stephen. Yeah. Jimmy? Oh, hi, Jimmy. Welcome. Eric? Eric must be running late, okay? Uh, Tyrone? Thank you. All right, Tyrone. And last but not least, are you Brian? Yep. All right, Brian. Nice to meet you. Take a quick look at your file folders just to see what's in there. We will be referring to some of the statistics, right? And this is what we're going to be talking about here today. I think everyone understands what I mean when I say baby mama. And in this class, we're going to discuss some statistics and how children grow up without fathers. It is very important that you all understand just how important you are in your children's life. Yeah, basically this class is for my mandate for parental rights, which help when I pay child support, but you know, I'm paying all this money and, and I can't even see her, you know what I'm saying? So, I just wanna get this over with. Daddy? When I pick up my child, she disrespects me right in front of my daughter, you know what I'm saying? And, and it just bothers me. So you think you can come at 1.15? You were supposed to be here at one o'clock. I am so tired of you doing this all the time. You habitually come late. All the time late. You see, now you've got her crying. I am tired of this. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go out. I told her. I told her that she can't go. No, she cannot go. But mommy, I want to go. <laughs> mommy. Just bother me, that's all. Okay, so this is the reason why we're here. And I hope that you did not escalate this situation. Escalate? No, you know, I think I kept my cool. You know, I, I wasn't too bad, you mean? What do you mean I can't take Cynthia? You did the same bull crap to me last time. No, no, I paid, I paid. They just took $200 out of my chin. No, I'm taking my child today. No, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Now, 
Now let's watch this video clip. And let's see who's left holding all of the feelings, please. Well, you might as well go change your clothes. I told your dad you're not going. I am just tired of every time he comes late when he wants to, just thinks he can just come pick you up when he wants to. I'm tired of this. <laughs> Mommy, I want to go. Oh, no. You're going to go change your clothes, and that's it. He's not taking you today. <sighs> that's my daughter. Hey, 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 that's Cynthia. What kind of class is this? That's the same outfit we had on that day. That's... Right. And shh, I need you to watch this. Thank you. Mommy, Daddy, I love you both. I hate it when you argue. I wish I was never born. Then Mommy and Daddy wouldn't fight anymore. She got a jam. I need to call my baby. Okay. Sheila, let me speak to Cynthia. No, I need to speak to my baby. I want to speak to my baby, please. Men, fathers, do you understand just how important you are in your children's life? So we can see when we watch flashbacks and videos and we talk about our children, we can see who is truly left with all of the feelings. See, this is the birthing of low self-esteem in this child's life. And this child is always going to suffer with areas of insecurity in these areas. When relationships begin to form in this child's mind, what examples will this child have to pull from? Okay. How do unhealthy relationships begin? I'm going to tell you how. They begin with how we perceive ourselves, OK? And how we treat others is an example of the relationships that we've come from. Now I want to tell you, statistics say that fatherless children are at a dramatically greater risk of suicide, fatherless children, have a greater risk of drug and alcohol abuse, mental illness, poor educational performances, <laughs> not to mention teen pregnancy. Yes, Jimmy, you have a question? Yeah, Dr. Jim, um, it, it's like this. I have a good relationship, but it seems that's the reason why me and my baby mom is not getting along. Mm, now that's an interesting concept. Let, let's talk about that a little bit more. Explain that to me. I mean, what, what is there to explain? I mean, the new relationship that I'm in now is, is she's everything I have wanted in a woman. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's a, it's a gift and a curse for the simple fact it's, it's stopping me from seeing my child. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like this. I mean, I, I should have told my baby mom that I was getting married. I know, I mean, my son was there. I mean, that's my son. That's my firstborn, you understand? That's my ring bearer. But in all honesty, I, I should have told her that I was getting married, and, and for some reason, somehow she found out. Hey, girl, what you think? What you think? How, how, how about this? No, that's too Michael Jackson-ish, okay. no. OK. This? No, I don't like you on church. No? No. Okay, come on. This one. Yes, girl. Yes. Now that's hot. Where you finna go? Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> I'm about know. to go out. Girl, I just put my mm -hmm. hair up. Okay. Yes, I'm about to go out. I thought you... Wh what? Why are you staring at me? Well, you know, I ain't the one to gossip right. Girl. But I bet you, you don't know. Know what? So you remember Teresa Avon, right? Yeah. So... Your point? Her brother's baby daddy, cousin, nephew, sister, girlfriend is friends with your baby daddy, sister, cousin, niece, and them. And? Okay. Jimmy finna get married at 4 o'clock, and it's 4.20, so he's probably walking down the aisle right now. Hold on. 
let me tell you one thing. Mm. That man does not lie to me. Mm. Oh, wait. Yep, think about it. He did just get little Jimmy a haircut, and he bought him some new clothes. But he said they was going to a party. <laughs> party? Oh, yeah, they're going to be like, hey, in the reception after the wedding. Yeah, that's the party. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, yes. Let's, Let's go, go to, to the, the church. church. And she just came to the wedding to snatch my son up out the, out the wedding. I mean, me and my wife ain't have a chance to walk down the aisle. I mean, it's, it's, I have been a laughing stock for summers. I mean, every barbecue, every, you know, family gathering. I mean, it's been horrible for my, my wife. It's been horrible for my family. And, and it's really been horrible for my son. I mm. mean. Hmm. Now, the first thing is, gentlemen, is that you never lie in a situation <coughs> like this. Okay? Excuse me, I'm sorry. But most importantly, no problem. Most importantly, you had your son lie and keep a secret from his mother. Do you know how dangerous that is? That's just something you don't do. Okay? <laughs> and you as a man, you as men, when you do that, you inadvertently teach him to dishonor his mother. Not only that, what message are you sending your son about women? Okay? No, seriously. You're sending him a serious message. Part number two. When you teach your child to lie to one parent, one parent is not better than the other. For real, okay? And how does a child establish authority? And who's the first authority in that child's life? It's the parents. And so now when that child experiences other authorities in other areas, they're gonna be dishonoring and they're gonna be dishonest, okay? Even to you. Now, we know that fatherless children, statistics say it clearly, that fatherless children and boys, they grow up in fatherless homes, are more likely to have troubles establishing appropriate sex roles. They even might suffer from gender identity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And see Jimmy, you have a son. You have a son. And you taught your son to lie. Technically, I ain't lie to her. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, man, that woman's crazy, all right? I mean, straight up and down. I mean, if I would have told her, it would have went somewhere else. And there isn't such thing as lying by omission. I mean, if I would have told her, I would have never got to see my son again. You understand? True. So you're alone in this, huh? So you're basically saying that uh, in this situation, you can see your son now, right? Right. Let's take a look. That's why I don't let you be around that jerk of a dad of yours. Anyone that will turn my son against me won't be around us. Can't be around us. But mom, that's why we didn't want to tell you. We knew you would get hurt. Hurt? Hurt me? You lying hurt me. I told your daddy I did not want you around that wretched heifer. Ratchet heifer? But mom, she's really nice, and she's really pretty too. Me and dad just didn't want to tell you because we thought you'd be jealous because he married her and he didn't marry you. Oh! What did I say? What did I say? Hmm. I never wanted my son to experience this. Honestly, straight up and down. Now, how could you have handled this situation differently? Seriously. Because, see, now your son has to fight a two-man lie, and he's just one little man. And now he's alone to fight this lie by himself. Now, again, class, I want to ask you all one question. When situations like this happen, who? Who is left holding all of the feelings? It's not you. Now, a study about psychiatric patients shows a couple of things. And it was shown that over a 34-month period, 
80% of the psychiatric patients that are suffering are fatherless and grew up in fatherless homes. Well, my situation is totally different. Dude, I feel sorry for you, man. I really do. But I met my baby's mama through her mama. We worked together. Man, I should have seen all the red flags coming from there. Let's take a look. Oh, I sure will. <laughs> all right. Uh, you have a good day, too. All righty. He would come over to my desk and use my phone. I said, Tybone, I know your name is Tyrone, but use your own phone. Oh. I'll never forget the first time my daughter came to my job. Oh, you should have seen Tybone looking at her, eyeing her like she was a, 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 a steak or a, a piece of meat or something. Yeah. Oh, he reminds me. He reminds me of my ex. Oh, no, no, no. Rotten. Rotten to the core. Yeah, it's like, like, like a, a canine <laughs> sniffing out fear. Like a like a cat that uh, toys with a mouse, like a, like a, like a snake, dirty lowdown snake. Yeah, OG. Oh, oh, they truly OGs. Oh, but let's put the D before the OG. Dogs. Oh, that's what they are. Dogs. I told my dog. I said, stay away from men like him. Stay away from men like him. Oh yeah. May I help you? Oh, okay. Man, why didn't I see the red flags coming? I, I can't believe it. You wouldn't believe what happened to me next. Let's take a look. Come on in here, children. Come on, come on in here. Yeah, Ty Jr. Come on, Rhonda. Yes, come on in. Ronelius, come on in here and sit down. Sit your butt down. You ought to be glad. Glad you got a grandma like me in your life. Yes, to pick up the pieces where your daddy left behind. I told your mama. I told your mama that your daddy was going to leave y'all. Just like your grandpappy left me. Yes, so. Oh, like a canine. Oh, like a canine. <laughs> Sniffing out fear. Like a like a cat that toys with a mouse. Yeah, like a, like a snake. A snake that swallows a frog. Yeah, uh-huh. OG. Oh, that's what they are. But let's put the D before the OG. Dogs. Now, now Ty Jr., you're going to be just like your daddy. Dog. Oh, that's what they all are. Dogs. Now you see what I'm talking about? Right there, you see that? Everything was fine until the babies were born. Golly. Dr. Jam, where did I go wrong? Now you saw the red flags from the beginning and you made a conscious decision to ignore them. <laughs> so somehow you thought that you were going to be detached from your baby's mama's mother. <laughs> Oh, no. No, 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 no. See, that's an all-package deal. And that's to all of you men, okay? When you have a baby's mama who has other children, you have a baby mama who has a baby's mama's mama, okay? They come all together. You didn't know that? Tyrone! I know your name is Tyrone. Dang, what was I thinking? You know? Now, I know that we would like to cry over spilled oil in the Gulf. <laughs> but the question I want to ask all of you is who's going to be responsible to clean it up? See, what happens is when you don't research the family and figure out if they're people you want to be with even after you break up and you have a child with a woman you can't stand now, you've joined that family. 
And now you all are family. But when we break it down, who is left with all of the feelings when you decide to go in head first? What was I thinking? How dig it. You know, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? What were you thinking? I don't know, Dr. Jim. Now let's watch this. When my baby daddy come over, I need you not to say anything like you did last time. He does not understand our new normal. I love you, Marvella, and you are a part of our life now. You are the children's second mother. Chester needs to understand that. See, my, 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 see, my, my situation is kind of like this class. It's, it's, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. My baby mom, my BM, it, she's gay now. <laughs> Ain't that some mess? She, she's gay, and not only that, she lives with her with her with her lesbian friend, and so I don't I don't want that type of lifestyle in front of my kids. This this this, this is the issue. I I go over there to get my kids. Is she gonna tell me what time to have them back? And I ain't talking about the mom. I'm talking about the, the lesbian friend. She gonna tell me and that when you gonna have the kids back? I mean, who who thinks who she thinks she is? Who she? I am. Ain't nobody got time for that. Doctor J, what what do I need to do to fix this mess? That's ain't ain't that some mess though? Well, first of all, what would you do if she was a man? I would be. Okay. You don't want to know that. <laughs> because see, she's still a human being. And I want you guys to remember something. You are not in this situation alone. Okay? But if you're a bum and you haven't paid child support, well, I guess I can understand the girlfriend's hostility. See? Now, let's also take her out the picture because she has nothing to do with the situation. It's between you and your baby's mama, and your child, okay? But you can't expect the courts to help you to establish parental rights if you haven't been taking care of business, if you haven't manned up in the situation. Let's roll the video. You see, Dr. Jam, we are doing this without any help from him. Marvella has been a godsend. Yes, we live together, she is my partner, and the children love her too. They understand, but Chester doesn't. He doesn't get our new normal. I mean, he needs to get with the times. Hmm. Now, when's the last time that you paid child support? That, I mean, that's, that's kind of why I'm here right now. I have court order to be here. Uh, excuse me, I, I guess I didn't hear that. Could you speak up so we can hear you? I'm trying to get my driver's license back. I was court ordered to be here. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So I get it. I get it. So the courts, the courts then had to mandate and order your manhood, is what you're saying. So what you're saying to me is the courts had to order you to be a man and to be a father to your children. Hmm. So your motive is not truly about your children. Your motive is about yourself. Your selfish reason. I guess, I guess I can understand why your baby's mama's girlfriend is so offended. Let's think about this. She's feeding, she's clothing, she's putting money into that house to take care of your children. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and guess what? I guess I would feel some kind of way if she's been more of a man and more of a father than me. Dr. J, I mean, you have to put me out there like that? I mean, you're gonna put me on Front Street? But you know what? That is what it is. Hey, well, I'm an alpha male. All male to be exact. Well, why am I? You know, yeah, wherever I go, ladies love me. Okay. Mm -hmm. All my baby mamas love me, right? <laughs> all, all, all of them, you know. Come on. They keep the windows open, the doors be open, you know. The vents be open, you know. 
Everything, bruh. Everything's open. You know what I'm saying? Like your suit coat. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, you like the, you know, my relationships is like a revolving door. Mm. You know, when one starts to act up and showing out, you know, I just call my other baby's mom. Sweet you know, girl. she bought you that suit. Hey, hey, look here. It's like a competition between them. You know what I'm Come saying? Yep. You know who can get me and stay the longest. You know. Teach me the game, brother. Teach hey. Come on. <laughs> they be trying to keep me to. You know, getting pregnant and stuff. You know, they try to keep me and stuff, see who's gonna keep me the longest, you know. But they should know by now. It don't work on a brother. You know? <laughs> it, 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 let me tell you something. <laughs> Look here. Come on. My uncle told me a long time ago, he said, Nephew, mm -hmm. get you a dog obedience book. <laughs> like that, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you understand? Huh. It works on them every time. Every time. Dog obedience, huh? Yeah. Now that, right there, that's a shame. True. <laughs> Dr. Jam, look like you seem a little tense. <laughs> this dude pulled you. Hey, you should loosen up, son. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hey, seems like uh, you've been in a Drought. <laughs> Look, we got Carlotta with her two kids. Carlotta? Yeah. I got Regina with her other two kids. No. Yeah. I got Sadia with her three kids and a possible four. Three. Yeah. But it looks like her other baby's daddy, you know. <laughs> That's hey. That's doing too much, man. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, wow. man, I got Pretty Patty. Ooh. With her two kids. Uh -huh, pretty Patty. Pretty Patty. Pretty Man, I love that white girl. I love that white girl, Pretty Patty. She do whatever, I mean, she do whatever daddy tell her to do. When I can't go nowhere else, I always come home to Pretty Patty. Well, excuse me, Mr. Double Dipper. I would sure hate to interrupt your premier user moment. <laughs> But there's nothing worse than a broke down male going round spreading his seed and don't got no water to feed. Oh yeah, I know you. You're the type who spins up all of her EBT. You drink the last little bit of juice and don't replace it. You leave your dirty underwear on the floor so that she can come up behind you and pick it up. But see, a man like you, you would never pick a woman like me because I'm too strong for you. You purposely seek out women who have low self-esteem. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. See, because uh, if she really took a good look at you and looked past all your shininess and your brand new perm, she'd be able to see what you got to offer. <laughs> what you got to offer, you are a cloud. Uh-huh. With no rain. You are a door that's leaning because you don't have a hinge. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. You're a wheat stalk without grain. And last but not least, and all of you men can get with this, you're a beautiful Cadillac without an engine. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, you have found a way to bamboozle yourself into a warm bed, hoping that she'll provide you with a wide open spread, if you know what I mean. But I got some questions to ask you. What's the highest level of education that you have? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, when's the last time that you actually had a job? When's the last time you had your own place? You know, where your name is signed on the dotted line, removed of your baby's mamas and your mama. See, because what we're dealing with here is a male and not a man. Because if you were a man, listen here, if you were a man, then you would be able to take care of your 15 some odd children. Right. But see, what I'm dealing with is a male. So if you're a male and not a man, I cannot expect you to be a father to all of them babies that you keep on having. <laughs> 
So know what I want you to do? Take your paper. One of y'all hand him a pencil or a pen. I need you, Doug, to be quiet and take some notes. Thank you. So now, Brian, you've been awfully quiet. What's been going on? I mean, what's up? You know? A registered letter for Dr. Jam. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Huh. I guess this is kind of interesting. Okay, well, I'll, I'll read that later. But, but Brian, what's up? Dr. J, listen, I'm, I'm just not used to all these men expressing these feelings. You mean all of these feelings? Let's take a look. Sandy! Sandy, open the door! Sandy, open it! Don't make me break it! Sandy, you better be not calling the pigs. Open the door. Sandy, don't you even. <laughs> Sandy, stop crying. Stop it. Sandy, stop it. Brian, Shut please. up. Brian, please. <laughs> stop it. Stop crying. <laughs> hmm. So I get it. You're one of them. Mm -hmm. See, when you're around other men, you don't have any feelings. But when you're around the weaker sex, you know, women, someone who can't overpower you or overtake you, that's when you build up all those feelings. Is that right, Brian? So all of your feelings begin to develop around people who are weaker than you. Am I correct there, Brian? That's when you get the feeling. You know what? I'm a good man, okay? You know, why didn't she open the door? You know, she, she really knows how to push my buttons. Hmm. Hey, oh. how do you figure that out? Let me explain something to you. Your oh. buttons are hypersensitive, Brian. Anybody who pushes your buttons, who pushes Brian's Buttons. See, because you're a man, Brian, without self-control, okay? So if your baby mama accidentally bumps your button, you just lose control. Is that right, Brian? So if, you're, if your mama bumps your buttons, you just lose control. Is that right, Brian? And when you're at work and people are pushing your buttons, then you just lose control because, see, you're a man without self-control because you like to overpower women. Is that right, Brian? You beat your baby mama in front of your kids. Is that right, Brian? You're the big man. Huh, Brian? You just like to... Lose control, huh? Is that you, Brian? Is that you? Shoot! See, let me explain something you know to you. Hey, yeah. why y'all gang up on me? I don't have to listen to this. You know, my baby mama all messed up, and you're blaming me? Oh, well, actually, you know what? I, I am out of here. Well, let me tell I you something, Brian. Here. Let me tell you something. You can go ahead and leave if you want to, but you're court ordered to this class. You're court ordered to be here. And so, if you want to go ahead and go, oh yeah, I'm putting your business out on the street. If you want to go ahead and go, then you have to deal with your probation officer. That's going to be on you. But you're court ordered to be here, Brian, okay? Because there's only one that's left with all the feelings, and it's not you. Even though you beat down your baby mama in front of your kids, it's not her that's left with all the feelings. It's your children. Who's left with all the feelings, Brian? So you can leave if you want to. All right, fine. Keep it together. Got it? Good. Now, let's take a quick moment and let's watch this. Dr. Jim. When me and Brian first got together, ooh, we, I mean, it was so good. I'm talking about, I just knew this was the one. Like, he was perfect. And then, you know, I wanted to become, you know, like, better myself. Because living in the projects, you know, that's not what i seen for me and my kids, like, all our lives. Wow. And then he started getting jealous. Well, that's what I think. 
he started getting jealous because I wanted to become more successful. Like, and I didn't get it. And at first, it was like a slap here and there, but he didn't do it in front of our children. So I was okay with it. Like, okay, you know, I can handle myself. But then, oh my God, mm, mm, mm. Mm. this man would show up and I'm talking about act a fool. I'm talking about, I didn't know what to do. I'm talking about act crazy, like ready to call the police crazy. And I'm just like, mm, is he doing it because he don't know like it's over? Because with me, like I'm done, like I'm finished. That's not, that was what my life was, but now I'm on a whole new path and our children love him. Like I would never ever take my children away from their father. But for me, as, as I stand, it's nothing between us. And I don't think he realized that yet. Mm. But I got some good news. Mm. I finally graduated with my master's degree. Oh, congratulations. Yes, I was so excited. Oh. Um, and me and my children are living the life that we always wanted. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. That's what's up. Brian, do you see that the relationship is truly over for her? It's over for you all. However, Brian, your children love you, Dad. But I, I still love her. And you can show her that you love her by being loving to the children and by being there for them. Being that caring dad, but for you and for her, the relationship is over and you gotta let it go. Let me take a moment, you all, to just look real quick at this letter. It looks as though Eric hasn't shown up and I just wanna make sure that this isn't something. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Well, Eric was supposed to be here, a part of our class, and I'm going to tell you just a little bit about his story. It looks as though he wrote us a very nice letter explaining why he couldn't be here. Uh, it says, please excuse me for this week, for I got a chance to be with my son this weekend. My baby's mama called me, and I'm excited to see him. I have not seen him for two years, and he is now a teenager. My journey as a father has been rocky. My relationship with my baby mama has been hit or miss, mainly miss. I desire to have a strong relationship with my son, but many times over the course of his young years, she would just disappear with him for two years, three years at a time, and I wouldn't know where to find them. The last time I saw my son, he was 11 years old, and now he's 13. I love my son, and I, and I want to raise him. Since he's back in my life and we're back together, when I see him this time, he says, I have plans to run away and take him. And now it's our turn to take disappear. The take the All right. It says, Dr. Jam, by the time you read this letter, I would have taken him and I would have gone into hiding. Please Jeez. keep me in your prayers. Sincerely, Eric. You can't take the kids. Well, that's, that's cold. The sad thing about it is, is that Eric has wanted to be there for his child, but he truly had baby mama drama. Don't we all know? Yeah. Well, his is a little different because he actually stepped forward and said, I will be there. Give my child to me. But she has taken off and disappeared year after year after year, bringing this man to the point where he feels the only way he's gonna be able to build a relationship with his child is by kidnapping him, which we know is never the answer. See, when you have an example, a prime example of a loving parent, a loving father, of a father who wants to be there for his children, we always want the baby mamas to understand that he deserves that right, and he does. But he has to remember, Eric has to remember that he's not alone in this. And for how long should he wait before he pursues the court system and says, hey, I want parental rights of my child. But remember, when you approach the court system, make sure that you as a man and as a father have your stuff together. 
Because they're going to ask you, how are you going to take care of this child? They're going to ask you, are you prepared to be the father this child needs? They're going to ask you, do you have a place for this child to live? And are you currently and actively employed and paying your child support as need be? It's sad to see Eric going through this alone without the help of friends and family, but really truly wanting to be the man to his children. <laughs> wow. Fathers, I really want to thank you for being so honest. I know that in conversations like this, it's very difficult to expose the true feelings that you have. But I want you to know that your children are truly looking up to you, and they're looking to you for all the answers. We can see what the statistics say, and the statistics are clear. We went through them, and they're in your packet. Fatherless children are at a higher rate of suicide. Fatherless children are at a higher rate of homelessness, drug addiction, alcohol abuse, mental illness, and poor educational performance. Let's not mention teen pregnancy. From the very foundation of these children, you have to be there. Now, the relationship between you and your baby's mom may not work out. But you don't have to entertain your baby's mama's drama. You don't. And remember, you're not in this alone. <laughs> I, wanna, I want you to think about a couple of things until next week. But I want to leave you with a clip from two teenage girls. <laughs> Statistics say that adolescents from single parent homes have been found to engage in earlier sexual activity. Let's watch this video. I will never be the same. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite song. <laughs> I love that song. Me too. Oh my gosh. Girl. That's my ringtone. For real? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but on a serious note, my dad, I don't know where to begin. He He's in jail. And he calls me every day while he's in jail. He writes me letters. He wants to see how I'm doing, how's school going. And then when he's out of jail, he always is like, he never calls me. Like, never. And then I'm like, uh, dad. I'm here. I'm not the one that just that's got out of jail. He's supposed you know? to be calling me. Right, that's what he's supposed to be calling me. And then he never calls me, he never says anything to me. And then um, I'm like, Dad, I'm here. You're out of jail. This is the time where you can come and see me too. And I'm like, it just kind of hurts my feelings because, you know, it feels like he doesn't, you know, want to see me. Well, with my dad, he's around, but he's not around. You I know get, what I mean? I get it. I mean, yeah. he's not in jail like your dad and everything, but. He, he'll, he'll say, oh, I'm going to pick you up at four. Okay, four comes, five, six, two weeks pass, and he doesn't even call. Are he'll call and be like, uh, I'll pick you up on Thursday. Like, nothing even happened. Like, he didn't even plan things with me. I just feel like if he's serious about wanting to hang out with me, he'd be serious, and he'd actually come and get me. And when he does actually come, that's the time I will be getting ready. Yeah. But what about when parents argue? Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. That's the most stupidest stuff. Yes. Parents, just grow up. Oh, Chink Chin. Oh, you owe me a soda. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, no, you we owe gotta me. go home. Oh my gosh. Well, I truly want to thank you again for this week's session. And I'll look for you next week for our next session of Baby Mama Drama. Class adjourned. Thank you so much.
Thank you for taking your time to watch and view Baby Mama Drama. We truly wrote this play as an opportunity to speak to the fathers. And yes, the play has some funny parts and some serious parts, but more than anything, what we want you to take away from this message is fathers, a nation can't be built without you. Our children are truly looking to you for the answers. And when you're not there and when you're not present, they are the ones left with all of the feelings. Throughout the play, we list the statistics about fatherless children, and each and every one of them are true statistics. We have listed some organizations that can further you in your journey as a father, and we hope that you reach out so that you can step up and be the man and the father that I know you want to be. Thank you once again for viewing Baby Mama Drama. Until next time, thank you.